friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with two cards for cat scrappiness. This is one of those things where I made a background paper and then I got a bonus card out of it. So I had one card originally intended and then with the leftover bits I was able to get some extra cards. That's always fun to do. So I am starting with a piece of watercolor paper that I just laid down a base coat of this sort of minty blue color. Then I am using some color bursts and I'm just tapping them on, spritzing them with water and then tapping on some other colors. I just picked some blues and greens that I had in my collection of color bursts but I also sprinkled in a bit of purple for some interest and um, I'm adding more water to spread it around and then I also am taking a clear stamp block and I'm smushing it into the colors to again just move them around in an interesting way. I had a lot of color on my paper so I took another piece of watercolor paper that I happened to have next to me, thank goodness, and I smushed them together so that I could use more of that color. However, it then created a very blended look which isn't necessarily what I wanted but I find that when I work with color bursts I kind of just have to be willing to just let it turn out the way it turns out and it's not one of those mediums that I find I can control. So now that I had this really blended background I wanted to go in and add a bit more because I wanted to get some of those spots of darker color that color burst creates and those like you know the little bursts of color that you know that gives them their name. So I decided to add a bit more in and be very cautious as I spritz this time and also going in with a wet paper towel to tap the color around and move it without getting everything as wet as I did the first time. So with color burst I recommend experimenting with more and less water to see how that affects it. I also love to spray shimmer spray over color bursts. You will again react the color burst though so you have to be careful if you're going to apply it and in order to make my it a little bit easier to control and not um, possibly disrupt the look that I liked I sprayed it onto a block and then I took the block to the paper so I just picked a shimmer spray I think it's as a, a gold color to it I spritzed it on my block and then smushed it all over my paper and in this way it caused the color burst to move a lot less and I was able to maintain what I was liking about those pieces of colored paper. So now I've started chopping it up and the first thing that I wanted to do was to use the winter otter in combination with the waves border dies. Because I think that we see waves borders and we're like, well, that's a summer thing that goes with my summer supplies. But, you know, there's lots of critters that can be perfect for the winter time as well who are found in the ocean. Um, the lawn fawn set specifically has the candy cane to make it a very clearly and then also the scarf to make it a winter scene. You know of course it's called the winter otter. So I recommend um, looking also in your stash and seeing what critters you may already have that you could add a candy cane to or a scarf or a hat you know, winter hat, Santa hat, something like that. I mean, obviously I know it's after Christmas, but I also know that uh, I like to make Christmas cards all year long. So anyway, I have cut an oval shape out of the center with the cat scrappiness never-ending ovals, I think is how they call it. Um, and I am going to put that down onto my card base, but I don't yet want to put the frame around it because I'm going to create a shaker. But by gently laying the frame down and then putting the circle through it, I know that everything is centered up. And now I'm ready to start creating the shaker. You may have noticed as I was chatting about other stuff. I was double layering my foam tape so I I don't actually don't know who this foam tape is from I kind of just have a lot of foam tape in my stash but I did link up some foam tape in the cat scrapping a store if you're running low and I doubled it up so that it's nice and thick because then all the sequins will shake around even more that that gives them plenty of room and I personally like a lot of shaker mix and a thick shaker so that it works really well I will say I wish I'd added more sequins to this mix because the only hesitation with putting that 
center oval panel down is that it will sometimes catch some sequins underneath it. So back to the waves dies. I cut the waves dies out of the same chunk of watercolor color burst paper that I created and I'm layering them on top to create more of a scene. I want to tuck my otter into the waves and again pull in that look of you know it's a very wintry card. This isn't uh, meant for Christmas and it won't actually have a Christmas sentiment in case you were worried that like I'm doing Christmas cards still. Uh, it uh, has a wintry look because of the blues to me. Uh, obviously you could do this card in the summertime and just choose a different critter that doesn't have a scarf on it. But I also thought that incorporating the sparkle made it a bit more wintry too. Again though, it's all about what you put with it. And I had colored up a bunch of the winter otters just like one day when I was trying to relax and I like to color up a bunch of images. So I had a bunch of otters colored and that's why I was able to create more than one card. I kind of like if, you know, if I go through the trouble of figuring out what color I like on an animal, you know, I'm going to color a few of it. Usually in a stamp set, there'll be multiples. Like, you know, you might get a set that has a whole bunch of koalas in it. And so when you find one koala color that you like, you can color all the koalas from the set or something like that. I don't know why I picked koala. But anyway, with the Lawn Fawn set, there's just the one otter. So... I just colored him a few times, but there are other Lawn Fawn sets with additional otters, I think. Or there's, oh, there's the other small otter stamp set. So you could do that instead. Then I wanted to create an area to put my sentiment. I hadn't really left room for my sentiment. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put a sentiment on the card, or, but I saw these, um, you know, in my stash, looking at my dies, these fancy scallop borders from Cat Scrappiness. And I thought, I bet I could create a fun place to put a sentiment with those. Even though they're border dies, I kind of created an oval shape with them, which I thought was a fun other use for them. You know, you, you don't always think a border die for, you know, a sentiment strip or something like that. But it does work. And all I did was take the same curved border and I cut one side of a piece of random purple cardstock that I had on hand. And then I cut the other side. Now the edges look really rough. I wouldn't use this piece completely, but I'm going to angle it and trim off the edges so that it will make it work. I did find that with this sentiment, you... I was sorry, I had a hard time putting the whole sentiment on the block at one time just because with the script some of the letters are taller and shorter and I wanted them to be a little bit more close together to compensate for the small space that I had created. I hadn't quite planned everything out correctly. I just kind of eyeballed to make sure there would be enough room. And so then I'm able to put it on a curve there in the corner with some strong um, ATG adhesive. And that's going to stick to any of those layers to the plastic. I, I prefer that adhesive just because it sticks to everything. And now that I have the front of my card complete, I'm ready to start adding the shaker materials. I generally recommend completing the whole front of the card before you even add the foam tape. But for whatever reason, I have a tendency to forget to do that. So I added my otter after the foam tape and my sentiment banner after the foam tape and all that. But it still worked out. I want to use an embossing powder bag just to reduce the static inside my shaker so that my sequins won't stick to the acetate. And then I pulled out some different sequins that I thought would pair up well with the background I created. I had the gold in there from when I added a bit of shimmer spray, so I wanted to pull in my sparkling Manhattan sequins. These are some of my favorite sequins from Cat Scrappiness. You know, as a nice neutral color, but also a lot of sparkle, so I find that there's a lot of occasions that I want to use it. However, because this is supposed to be kind of like the ocean, that this is all going on inside, um, I wanted to add a bit of blue too. So here I'm adding a little bit of extra adhesive behind this circle, this, sorry, this oval, and that's because, as mentioned before, sequins can get stuck underneath those sort of elements. So if you put that inside of the shaker, the sequins can get stuck underneath it unless it's sealed really well. So something like a stick adhesive or taking your glue all the way to the edge can certainly help out with that. And it might be one of those cards that you have to shake a bit more vigorously to get all the materials to move around and get unstuck from the edges. So as I mentioned before, I wanted to add a bit of blue just because it was meant to represent the ocean. So I decided to 
take my blue steel sequins and just pick a few of them to add in. I didn't want to overwhelm the brown and also not all of the blues in the blue steel mix coordinated perfectly with my background. So that's always another suggestion of just, you know, you can buy a pack of sequins because you really like how they look together, but don't be afraid to separate them as well if that means that you're going to make use of them and enjoy them more. I'm going to peel off all that foam tape and line up the top part of my shaker with the oval that I laid down earlier. And it should be perfectly centered because I you know, tested everything out earlier. And as you can see, quite a bit of shaking going on. I honestly wish I probably even put more shaker material in it. But then I have some more waves that I had cut out with that same background paper that I created at the beginning of the video. And as I mentioned, I had a few more of the otters because once I picked the Copic colors I liked, I colored a few otters since that stamp set is so small. And to add a bit of definition, because I'm going to layer the waves up, when I did it on the shaker card, I felt like the waves lost a little bit of their definition and I almost wanted to put some foam tape behind them. That, but I didn't want to make the card even bulkier. So to add some distinction and dimension between the layers, I decided that I would just put a little bit of distress ink on the edges. And I think that was faded jeans distress ink. Really any dye ink will do. I'm just trying to put a bit of a dark ink at the edges so that it's more clear where the edge of the waves are. I created three cards in the end, I think, because even after I did this and I took this little chunk of uh, this little rectangle and the wa extra waves that I cut out because I wasn't sure how many waves I was going to use, I still had more waves and more of that background paper. So I think I made an even a third otter card, but the second and third one were pretty similar. So I'm not going to show you both here. I'm going to layer the waves such that they're not perfectly lined up. I don't want all of the crests of the wave to be in the same spot. I just don't think that would look as interesting. You could also mix up the waves. On the first card, I use some of the different waves because what's cool about the Cat Scrappiness wave die is there are three different waves in it. It's not just one wave. And I um, layered all of the same for this particular one just because I thought that worked out for me. And then when I put the otter in, I, since I had already taped down the wave layers, it was really hard to tuck his tail under there. And I could have tried to peel up the layers, but as you'll see, I actually just trim his tail since his tail is going to be tucked behind the waves anyway. I decided when I added a sentiment, I probably had to go with something a little bit more um, prominent because if I stamped in black on that background, I don't think it would have worked. I just think it would, the sentiment would have got lost, so I wanted to stamp it in white, but I wanted to do that before I added the otter just because the otter would be one more thing that the embossing powder could get stuck in or on, and I wanted to have a crisper sentiment. So I'm going to try to make sure that my heat gun is hot and that I heat both sides of the paper. Sometimes while I'm waiting for it to heat up, I just heat the back of the paper just so that it reduces the amount of warping and I try not to overheat it. As soon as it's melted, I try to take my heat gun away just so that I don't get any additional warping since I had created a large watercolor background. So here again, I'm trying to put the otter in. He's poking out too much, you know, so I'm just going to trim off that tail rather than trying to pull up the layers and no one will ever know that he is missing his little bit of tail there. You could, of course, save some time with coloring if you know you're going to be only using part of the otter, like just have his head or the top of his body peek out. Save yourself the trouble of cutting around it or coloring up those parts of the otter. So once I had that down, I kind of just wanted to stick with, again, it just being a second card essentially made from scraps of the first card. So I took a white card base out. I, I always keep white card bases folded in my craft room. I just make like, you know, 50, 100 of them at a time. And I had these pieces of purple that I had cut the fancy scalloped borders to create the sentiment on the first one. And I realized that if I tucked in that corner that had the fancy um, die cut out of it, that it would look like one solid rectangle, even though it wasn't. And it would be a way to use up that scrap of paper that was left on my desk since again, Part of the point was to make a second card with what was basically left on my desk from the first card. I'm going to be pretty generous with the amount of adhesive that I added here just because 
Again, that is a piece of watercolor paper that had quite a bit of, um, could have had quite a bit of warping to it. And so by adding extra adhesive, that again helps it to stay flat. I did get that paper to dry relatively flat, again, just from heating both sides and from um, letting it have some time to air dry as opposed to going directly with the heat gun. Now, once I had that layered up, I did want to add a final touch of detail, incorporate it again into kind of, you know, the sort of the idea of the scraps of the first one. Now, of course, the sequins aren't scraps because those are just, you know, right back in the bag and can be used for another shaker card, but just kind of pulling elements of the first card into the second card you know, to show a different look with the same materials. So I'm just going to, again, since I pulled out some of the blue ones from the the blue steel mix I'd pull out some of the like silvery clear ones again to sort of just balance out the fact that I pulled some extra blues out of it I didn't want to pull even more blues and then that would make it you know that that would change the mix up a bit more so I just added three sequins in a little visual triangle there to attach sequins, one option I really like is just adding small glue dots underneath them. I find that those generally hold pretty well and they're a little bit less messy than multimedia mat, but I do also use multimedia mat to attach sequins. So that was it for my two projects today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave links in the video description below of all the products I use, as well as a discount code to use at Cat Scrappiness if you would like to purchase any of these products. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.